My name is Nathan Short and I'm here today because of a camel in Congress. I grew up in Oklahoma City. As a kid, I thought when I grew up I'd want to be a G.I. Joe, a soldier in the Army. When I graduated high school, I listed into the Army National Guard and I went to basic at Fort Knox, Kentucky. When I got my Class A uniform on for the first time, it was awesome. I felt honored to be able to wear it. After I finished my training, I made two of the biggest decisions of my life. I went active duty and I was stationed at Fort Sill and I got married. My job at Fort Sill was driving trucks. I was there for a little over three years when our son Spencer was born. He was eight months old when I received my orders to go to Iraq. In January of 2003, I packed my stuff up and boarded the plane. I was stationed at Camp Arif John in Kuwait. I was working operations of picking up trucks off the ships and keeping up with the MTS, our mobile tracking system. Three months later, an army doctor found a benign tumor in my ankle, so I was sent home for surgery. I was happy to be home, but I felt I hadn't finished what I'd started. I felt guilty I had to leave the other soldiers after only putting in three months. So when my ankle was healed, the army asked for volunteers to go to Iraq. I signed up. In February of 2004, I went back. I was stationed at Truckville in Kuwait. We'd get, we'd take shipments from the, from, we'd take supplies from camp to camp, and mostly I delivered concrete bunkers. On April 20th, 2004, my squad leader, Staff Sergeant Williamson, was driving a PLS, or palletized load system. I was in the passenger seat, and we were going about 65 miles an hour on a highway when about 15 to 20 camels came onto the road. A truck ahead of us hit a camel, and another PLS in front of us slammed on its brakes. We didn't have enough room to stop. We either had to go right or left. There was a car with a family to the right, so we went left. We clipped the trailer on back of the PLS in front of us. The steel trailer crushed the aluminum cap. The impact knocked me out, and when I came to, I was hanging over the ground because I still had my seatbelt on. Some mechanics in the vehicle behind us came out to help and they, I thought that the truck might catch fire, so I had them cut me out. I was trying to walk, but everybody around me could see that my leg was broken. While I was waiting for the medevac, my body started aching. I could feel rocks in my back, and the guys were putting their hands underneath me and telling me there wasn't any rocks. I had found out later what I felt was my own broken bones. The medevac arrived within about eight minutes and landed at the Quake City Hospital. An ambulance took me to the emergency room, and then they took me straight to the OR. This is the last thing I remember. I was out for about 30 days after that. They tell me I was flown to a Longstuhl Regional Medical Center in Germany. I was in such bad shape that the Army considered flying my family to tell me goodbye. They didn't think I'd make it much longer, but my condition stabilized and I was flown to Walter Reed in D.C. By the time I got there, an infection had gotten worse, and my body swelled up like a balloon, and I got pneumonia. My wife and my mom were in D.C. waiting for me, and they could barely recognize me because I was twice my own normal size. The doctor told my family that they, they didn't expect me to make it through the weekend. I remember having some crazy dreams, with a man in a dark robe reading me my last rites. Then a man in a white robe with a dark red sash told me that I had only blood, I had a new birthday, and that's when I woke up. They told me I had sustained injuries to my intestines and my wrist, my foot, and ankle, and that I'd have metal in my body for the rest of my life. Because of permanent nerve damage, I have drop foot, which means I cannot point my toes up towards my leg. I came home June 2nd, 2004 in a wheelchair, and the doctors told me it'd take over a year from, to be able to walk again but it wasn't good enough for me. I was out of a wheelchair within four months. I used crutches and then a cane, and now I don't need anything to walk, but I will have a limp for the rest of my life. In May of 2005, I got my medical retirement. Because of this injury, I do get some compensation and other benefits from the VA for the rest of my life. However, it is not enough money to, money to support me and my family. The VA recognized with these injuries, I still could perform some jobs. The question I faced was, what kind of job am I supposed to get? I had six years of military training and truck driving, but I could no longer be in the military and I could no longer drive a truck. I had to start a new career.
Looking back, I think I was in denial about my injuries. I thought that I could just go find another job like nothing ever happened. I found out it wouldn't be that easy. As soon as I retired, I got a job at a factory. And I had to quit because I couldn't take breaks to ease the pain. I got another job with, through a friend counseling kids at a group home. It wasn't rewarding jobs, but sometimes we'd have to physically restrain the kids. And I wasn't supposed to be lifting anything heavy because it would jeopardize my recovery. So I had to quit after a year. I was running out of ideas when I heard about a nonprofit agency called Professional Contract Services Incorporated, or PCSI. A friend saw an ad in a newspaper that PCSI was looking for people to work on a vehicle contract at a Tinker Air Force Base. They were actually looking for people with disabilities, so I didn't have to hide it. The reason why they were recruiting people with disabilities is because of the Ability One program. I interviewed and I got the job. At Tinker, they have to know exactly how to prepare the truck to be shipped out. I used to be the guy on the other side of the shipment, so I have a special knowledge on how these things work. This was a good job for me on a lot of levels. After working on the contract for two years, I got a, offered a promotion. I am now the quality assurance manager at PCSI headquarters in Austin, Texas. I will never forget the important role that the Ability One program played in my and my family's life. Without this program, I don't know where I'd be today. So now you know how a camel in Congress put me where I am today. The accident almost took my life and then my career, but Congress helped me get it back. The Ability One program helped me see that I'm not a disabled veteran, but an enabled veteran. Over 30,000 soldiers have come home wounded since the beginning of the war. Statistics like these can be overwhelming. A lot of us see the news and wonder, how can one person help? Well, one person signed an Ability One contract at Tinker Air Force Base, and that person changed my life. Because of them, a 26-year-old Iraq veteran got the opportunity to have a successful career again. But I'm just one individual who benefits from the Ability One program. I am told that there are 40,000 people employed through this program. In closing, it was an honor to serve my country in uniform. I thought it was a great country before and I think it's even a better one now. It's a country that supports its soldiers not just during war, but after war. So the next time a requirement for a new contract comes across your desk, take a moment and consider Ability One. And on behalf of myself and all of the Ability One employees, thank you.